Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Do uh, you have questions or comments? Thanks, Dr. Taylor. You're welcome. Uh, I just want to know, do you remember this God button? Do I remember what? God button. The God button? Do you remember that? Is that from class? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somebody else. Yeah, okay, cool. So my question is, how does the cruciform life in, inform the sermon delivery? Yeah. I think that's it. I, I hope you understand what I mean by yeah. that. Okay. Um, I think Joel Brooks helped us out here because he said it's, I think we're on the way. If, if Not that we're, Paul says, we're not commending ourselves, but he also then, he does commend himself. He writes a letter to the, to the Corinthians defending his apostleship. But why? Because Paul's confident before God that he's, he's, spoken to them and he's lived with them in integrity. And this is why it has to be seen. So Joel Brooks tries to live with integrity. So however you speak, and if you're a writer, write out your sermon manuscript. It's fine, it's good. If you're a grinder and you, th and you want, you know, and you're gonna pray that Piper prayer, release me, the <laughs> morning of, good. So the, the, the ways that we speak, like in personality and style, it's, that's, that's as different as each of us. But I think the test is, it is the, the cruciformity ties into the, the integrity, the, the righteousness, the holiness, the, which is love. So the, the preaching moment is, it's, a, it's whole cloth. It's a piece of the pastoral moment throughout the rest of the week. And you may stand up and preach one Sunday with full knowledge that that, that person in that row is hopping mad at you. And you know that he or she has gossiped about you, somebody else in the pew. But the, the challenge isn't to work the situation so that that person stops. The challenge is to be men and women of sincerity, commissioned by God, before God in Christ we speak. So, I mean, the, the preaching moment's going to be very different and very personal and very congregational, I think. Does that help? Uh, Dr. Taylor, thanks again. Um, I like what you said about cruciform living and preaching, especially in our, you know, preaching culture today that's very obsessed with celebrity um, preachers, you know, where the fame can be so heavy, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, how do we you know, be faithful, cruciform preachers in our lives as well without crucifying ourselves, like without overburdening, without self-loathing, yeah. without all those things that could be probably the opposite extreme? Okay, I, you know, a lot of what I think I wanted to answer questions just like keep reading 2 Corinthians because you see Paul has joy. So there's this, there is this joy in Christ. Like I'm in Christ. I'm again, so I'm not in myself. Like, um, yeah, I'm not in myself. So I, I'll just try to be. I'll probably be real with you. I'll try to be authentic here with you. Um, I got into the habit out of, and I, and I think I'm for a while here back into it. I recite in my mind Galatians 2.20 every night before I go to sleep. So it just helps me, helps me know I'm in Christ. I'm not in myself. And... You can say whatever you want about me. You can, they can do whatever. To, like I'm in Christ, so I, I mean, the, it's real. <laughs> I mean, we have. That's that's my halting sort of answer, I guess. And 
you know, we need more of we need more of Paul's words. We need more of the Psalms. We need more of the we need more of Bonhoeffer or Wesley who help us in different ways get more of Paul's words, more of the Psalms, more of the Gospels. That's I think how we help that. So, why do we make you take Greek and Hebrew? Why do we make you, I make, you know, yes, we do make you. Um, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the associate dean after all. I'm the, I'm the no guy. Um, history and doctrine and pastoral theology and spiritual formation and preaching. And it's, it, it's to make a good start. It's to make a good start at this kind of life, not just the kind of speaking, but the kind of life that Paul describes in 2 Corinthians. I'm very interested in who you are 30 years from now. I think, yeah. <laughs> Doug? Yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll know, uh, we'll know the, the joy of Dr. Webster fully by that point. <laughs> but that's like, uh, this is a thought, this is not a complete thought. I want to have an eschatology of education, of discipleship. So who, who are you? Dr. Janelette and McDermott and I had a very brief conversation about Brever Childs yesterday. And Childs, ended, you want to tell him like how he, where he ended up in church and why at the end of his life? Out of Missouri Synodism. So Childs had been in an Episcopalian context most of his life in Yale. He ended up in a Missouri Synod congregation because he wanted his kids to hear the truth of the gospel at the end of his life. So who are we going to be, you know, when we step on the other side and see him face to face? That's why we have to, why we walk this life now. We had Rabbi Pesach Waliki here last night. He said it well, like eschatology is the finish line. And once you know the finish line, that helps you determine how to play the game before the finish line. Paul, I mean, he just unpacks that in all sorts of different ways with different situations, different congregations. So that's, that's our life too. So it's, it's, we have, like, we're just so... Van Hooser's helpful, Dr. Webster reminds us all the time of what's washing over us. And what washes over us is me, myself, and I, right now, I gotta make a quick panic decision to get this done for myself. So rather than I'm gonna trust God and trust the plan and trust, take the long view, like we're so Social media doesn't help. I mean, hyperlinks don't help. They train our mind to go from one thing to the next instantaneously. So what washes over us? We have to take the, the long view. This is why the Preaching Institute, and then Dr. Pasquarello has convinced me over and again that, that by God's providence, we've, the, the right person is here with us to help us do this. It's the life. It's the way of the preacher. It's not... There's no lab. I mean, what do you hear Dr. Smith and Webster say? And you'll have Pasquarello in the spring, some of you. Dr. Smith says, now, I know less about preaching now than ever before. Most of us laugh at that. Ah, but that, that's right, I think. So the growth we want to have, we talked about this in our mentoring group, the growth we want to have is, is a growth downward in humility. We'll go downward in humility. And it's hard because I'm in a context. Like, we get to evaluate one another. I get evaluated. We can, we can be promoted in a university setting where you demonstrate increasing competence, increasing effectiveness, increasing. So if I'm not careful, what can wash over me is increasing pride, right? 
but so the challenge of the Christian life, so the challenge of the preaching life is to grow downward, grow downward in humility. And the only thing that helps us to Daniel's question, I, the, the thing that helps me do that is learning from those ahead of me, mentors, mentors who are ahead of me, men and women ahead of me, who've grown downward in humility, and then peers are trying to do the same. So some of you have to go. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Joe. Yeah.